All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's this particular workshop. Um, my name is Yusian. I'm part of the MDL sponsorship team. Um, I'm just going to be facilitating this workshop with Miriam, who will be talking about creative thinking. And without further ado, I'm just going to pass it along for, to Miriam to give her presentation. Yeah, thank you so much, Yusin. Hello, everyone. I'm going to take you through creative thinking. And what's on my agenda today is a little bit about me, and then we'll touch on creativity, creative thinking, turning to creative thinking, and also a short demo of the Turing's test of creative thinking. So I'm going to start with a little bit about myself. So I do have a background in microbiology, biotechnology, and biochemistry. And interestingly, my design journey started with web development. I now currently work as a designer at Apply Digital, which is a digital agency that creates digital products. I also mentor at Dribble and ADP List. I do love learning new things, and I'm also a huge foodie and tea collector. I think one of my favorite teas is green tea with the different variations. So I'm going to start off with this quote from Einstein that says, creativity is seeing what others see and thinking what no one else has thought. I know sometimes we do come up with ideas and we're like, oh, maybe someone else did think about it. But how we think about it has a very fresh and different perspective. So let's dive into creativity. Have you ever been in a situation where you came up with something new due to the circumstances you were in? I'd really love to hear that in the comment section. But I'll tell you a short story of how I ended up creating this recipe, which is an, which is an outlet. So I had eggs in my pantry and oatmeal as well. And I didn't want to make eggs separately and oats separately. So I decided to combine the two and create a recipe. So this is just a way of how creativity manifests in our day-to-day -day lives. So there's a lot of misconception about what creativity is. I see it as our ability to look at a problem and come up with a good solution to solve it. So once we understand this, we realize that it has nothing to do with the subject matter, the job, or what we study in school. So there are a number of ways that we can all become creative thinkers. Let's start with experiences. And this is a key player where the more you experience, the more influence you get. And these experiences define how your ideas and creativity are presented through your work. And you've seen a lot of people who talk about traveling and how traveling really changes their perspective of things um, and also expand their experiences. When it comes to fearlessness, this one really has a major impact. If you think you're not creative, then you can never be. Having doubts is okay, but being worried about the success of the ideas can really make you lack faith in your idea. So the best way to overcome this is to share your work, get more feedback, and also to know what your why is. Desire is really vital and it's often overlooked. So you need to want to see change for it to happen. So it closely borderlines being passionate about what you're doing. And then lastly, space and time. Productivity might increase under pressure, but when it comes to creativity, not so much. So you might consider dedicating time to focus on creating something original because this actually takes a lot of time. So let's look at creative thinking. I used to ask myself, how is it that some people always seem to be able to generate new ideas and think creatively while I seem to struggle? So I'd say the secret sauce lies in the ability to use creative thinking, which is the ability to consider something in a new way where we are thinking outside the box. 
where we're also seeing a problem or an issue from a new angle or a new perspective. Creative thinking is, is also not limited to artistic types or creative types like artists and musicians. So it's a skill that anyone can nurture and develop. So regardless of whether you view yourself as a creative type or not, you can learn some useful skills and techniques, which I'm going to talk about, which will enable you to tap into that creative right brain thinking and bring a new perspective to innovation, problem solving, and managing change. So let's look at expressing creative thinking. So there are different ways creative thinking is expressed, and we'll start with being analytical. So this requires the ability to examine things carefully to know what they mean. So whether you're looking at a design problem or a design challenge, a data set, a research outcome, you really need to be able to analyze it fast. Also by coming to a problem with an open mind, you allow yourself the chance to think creatively and solve problems in a new way. Organization seems counterintuitive, where we think aren't creative people known to be somewhat disorganized? Actually, organization is an essential part of creativity. While you might need to get a bit messy when trying out a new idea, you need to organize your ideas so that others will understand and follow through with your vision. And lastly, communication. So people will only appreciate your creative idea or solution if you communicate it effectively. You need to have strong written and oral communication skills. And this is where storytelling comes in. So instead of rather listening or instead of listing just facts, storytelling comes in where you're telling a story through your design process about how you discovered a problem and came up with a solution. So let's look at the different ways, um, the different techniques of creative thinking. So there are a few times in my day-to-day -day job that I do turn to creative thinking, and these are just some of the common ones that come up. So the first one is when I'm faced with a major problem and I cannot see an obvious way forward. And this is usually when there's a creative block and I cannot seem to figure out the solution to the problem I'm working on. Um, at times is when it's a time of change and it's really hard to see what might, might lie ahead. And I really want to think about possible solution, I mean, possible scenarios. And this is when I turn to creative thinking techniques. Sometimes in a team, when there's a disagreement about maybe what needs to be to happen next or what needs to be designed next and there's no compromise um, there's no compromise that seems possible without a lot of effort and also when i really want to create something new maybe that hasn't been tried before and i'm really not sure what that is and this could be something like a new feature a new website or maybe ex uh, improving an existing website or feed or application so the different techniques of creative thinking are things like brainstorming. So the principle behind brainstorming is that sometimes you might have an idea and then it's not very good. So the best way to have a good idea is to generate lots of ideas with your team and then discard the, discard the impractical and inappropriate ones, then prioritize on the ones that will meet your goal. And you can generate as many ideas as possible through time boxing with your team so that you're not spending too much time trying to come up with ideas. So after coming up with your, your ideas, you note the ideas in stickies and then start grouping and prioritizing what's important based on the problem you're solving. The end result, which sometimes look, looks like this, will be much easier to visualize compared to a static list. The next one is mood board. And a mood board is a, like a collage, a collection of images, fonts, icons, and colors 
that is representative of a particular theme or style. And these are also known as inspiration boards in design projects. So setting the mood is very important for any design project. It helps designers and stakeholders get on the same page for the visual aspects of the project. And also mood boards really do help to communicate the artistic direction of a project. And then lastly, reframing, where it works by changing an interpretation in order to see something in a different way or in a different frame. So whether it's a design problem, a behavior, an object or a situation that you want to focus on. And reframing could be, can be seen by asking yourself a few questions. Things like, could it mean something entirely different? Could it be something useful somewhere else? Is there a funny side of the problem that I'm solving? Are there any other opportunities that arise from this problem? And what does it mean to other people that are not my target audience? Which brings me to a short demo of the Torrance test of creative thinking. And this is from um, the aspect of reframing where we're asking ourselves, could the problem mean something entirely different? So an interesting thing about this test is that it assesses how creatively a child mind works. And it's often given to children to determine advanced placements or as part of an entrance exam. So how I use this test is to unravel the ingenious parts, parts of my team's brains. And the idea is that I'd usually provide four incomplete figures and ask them to sketch some new objects or figure out those unfinished objects. So this is the link to the activity. And I'm also going to share the same for you to participate at your own time. Let me just check in the... Okay. I'm not able to share it, but I'll have... Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Let me know if you're not able to edit. I think I've given it edit access. But the idea of this uh, activity is to help a team come up with, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's to help a team bond, especially when um, they have different types of ideas and they're not able to um, come up with, I mean, they're not able to decide on one. And also sometimes just brings a team together, especially when there's a lot of disagreements. So I'm just going to do a short demo and then maybe at your own time, you can just um, try experiment. So I'm going to add in my name. And then the rule of this activity is to avoid using red so that you're able to infer meaning to any of these objects. So I'm going to use black let's see and then i'm going to try infer um, meaning to these images let's say for example maybe this could be maybe a bird or a chip forgive my drive my drawing skills and then this could be maybe a butterfly. Then maybe I can change this to purple. <laughs> and then maybe this could be just a cup of wine. That's it. And maybe this could be mountains. So one interesting thing that I saw with this activity when I did it with my team is that so many of us had the same ideas of what these objects meant. And also some of us had really 
out of the box ideas that of this what of what this uh, object meant as well. So that brings me to the end of the presentation. Thank you so much, everyone. And yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Hi, Miriam. That was great. Thank you so much for the presentation. I really enjoyed it. Um, throughout your presentation, I did like end up like having some questions. Mm -hmm. So I think the first question that I had was, how do I create this like library of tools in my brain? Like some ways that I think would be best would be feedback, especially in terms of design where there's no like really objective point of view to like what is a good design, like especially as you go further into like industry um, mm -hmm. because it's so creative, it's such a creative like field. Yeah. But what are some ways you can like create these tools in your brain? And if it's feedback, then where can I ask for one? Like, where's a good place to ask? Yeah, that's a good question. So for feedback, it could be, um, so I'm, I'm going to divide it in a couple of things. So say, if you're already working in an organization and if you're not working in an organization. So if you're not working in an organization, then I'd say um, for your designs, you can reach out to different designers on LinkedIn or different platforms such as ADP List, where mm -hmm. they offer design feedback, portfolio reviews, um, mock interviews. Um, the other thing is your, your classmates. Some people really have good eye for design and problem solving. So that would be also another way. Um, if you're working in an organization, I'd say reaching out to either your leads or other designers to just give you feedback on the type of work you're doing. Okay, that those are some great, great ideas. Um, I don't yeah. know, as, as an introvert, it's always kind of hard to approach people to ask for an, what they think about my design, especially because I know I'm going to get hurt if they don't say something nice. Um, although I should take criticism as something to like improve upon, it's, it's hard to put that into practice sometimes. But yeah how do you yeah. how did you overcome that if you ever had that struggles before yeah i did have those struggles and one thing i found is that it's really important to let the person know what type of feedback you're looking for say if you're looking for feedback on the visual design then let them know if you're looking for feedback for the users the user experience let them know or maybe you're just looking for feedback on the type of uh, photos you're using on the website or the app or maybe the type of colors you're using for, on the buttons. So it's really important to just give context. Sometimes if you don't give context, they might give you feedback on things you, you didn't even want feedback on. That's true. Yeah. Uh, it's not what I asked for, but they're still <laughs> telling me about it. Yeah, that's so true. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Those are actually really nice um, insights. I think I might actually apply them in my um, studies, but yeah, I don't worry. see any other questions, but I happen to have a lot of questions for this presentation, so I'll keep going. Yeah, no um, one thing I had was you talked about communication as part of your part of the important creative process. Mm -hmm. um, what are some ways that you can improve on communicating, especially um, I feel like if you're a social person, you have a lot of opportunities to interact with people and like learn how to communicate in a way um, that adheres to that person's personality or persona. But mm -hmm. what are some ways that you can learn to communicate better when you don't really have that like outgoing personality to like approach them first? Well, that's a good question. Um, I've never really question. thought about it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so this, so maybe communicating with other designers or just communicating, presenting designs. I both? think um, in terms of creative process, so oh, yeah, anything okay. related to, yeah, creative process, how you communicate it with other people. Yeah. So I'd say if, if maybe, especially at the beginning of a project, if you're not really sure about your idea, then I'd say go to someone you feel comfortable with talking about it. So maybe you can just do a short demo or presentation or maybe just talk about your idea and then hear what their thoughts are. And then based on their feedback, then you can make a few changes and then 
adding someone else in the conversation. So it's just adding one person and then adding the next person you trust up to the point where you're presenting to the whole team. By the time you're getting to that point, you're really confident about the type of idea you're proposing to people. Oh, okay. So more like yeah. gradually getting into that um, more deep conversations and communication yeah. as your ideas get more solid. Yeah. And then the other thing is also just practicing out loud. Mm -hmm. So just maybe say, for example, we have a an idea of coming up with the next, maybe the next, um, the next big EV. So you'd be like, what do I need to do to beat Tesla? You know? Tough question. Yeah. So you need, then <laughs> after that, you'll write whatever you need to do to beat Tesla. And then whatever solution you've come up with, you, you'll have to keep asking yourself, why? Like, why did I come up with this solution? Is it really the best solution I could come up with? What else could make it better? So it's just pushing the limits to the type of solutions you're coming up with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, that, make, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and just adding on to that, some things that I've struggled with, um, especially when I'm trying to collaborate with someone uh, about something creative. I feel like creative process, there's like that individual part where you're sitting alone and you're brainstorming and you, it's just you and your design and you don't have any feedback and you like what you see. But then you start collaborating with other people who have different ideas, which are also good, but quite different from yours. So then you have this like conflict, but n there's no like objective standpoint where like n both of you don't want to like kind of compromise your design with. How, how do you ever like overcome that part? Like what is some ways that you can, I don't know, like resolve that conflict? Hmm, it actually does happen more often than not. Um, I think for me, what has worked in the past is like, sometimes you have to go back to what the goal is. Like, what is the goal of this project? What problem are we solving? What's the visual direction? And then from that, you can start brainstorming together, or maybe they can give you constructive feedback as to why they think your design doesn't work. And then after that, you can ask them for what they think works. And then maybe from that, you can just have a conversation and decide on something. Um, and sometimes you can do like a little brainstorming session with them where you're writing ideas and stickies and then prioritizing and deciding which one makes sense. Mm. But it's, it's something that comes up over and over again, even in the design process at work. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've definitely had this conflict before. And what happened was, Usually just one person gives up and like, whatever, you just do your part. And then uh, I, it's not the best yeah. solution, but yeah, just looking for different ways to kind of overcome this. But I guess um, that's also another approach for sure. Yeah. And sometimes if it's user experience, the best way to support your decisions is to have data. Like yeah. someone ask you, why, why did you decide to add this button here? You have to have rationale towards so many of the de design decisions that you're making. Um, yeah, that's, those are great ideas. Maybe I'll use them sometime. Yeah. Um, I think we have like a little bit time to squeeze one more question, which mm -hmm. I do have. Yeah, um, yeah. So about the stickies, um, I've noticed that a lot of companies when they're like, preliminary stage they will use stickies to help them like decide on something or brainstorm mm -hmm. um how does that really work because I've never actually tried that method myself but it seems to be something that's very common in the industry so could you maybe like elaborate on your experience on how that worked out for you yeah we yeah we use stickies in a lot of situations but I'll give you maybe I'll give you a scenario I think maybe that will make more sense um Say, for example, we want to figure out ways of improving online designathons. So maybe that's a problem we have. Mm -hmm. um, and then at that point, if you're in a group, everyone will try shout their ideas and whatnot. So the best way is to give someone maybe 10 minutes or five minutes and have them 
write down the ideas on a sticky note. Um, if it's virtual, you can do it on FigJam or MiroBot. So everyone will, will write down their ideas. And then after that, you'll come back as a team and then start grouping those ideas to similar ones. So maybe say, for example, we wrote something similar. So those will be in one bucket. And then after that, as a team, you'll decide what goes to the next step. Maybe some ideas are not too strong. You'll discard them and then you'll move on to the next step where you're now trying to look at each idea critically and figuring out which one should we discard and which one should we move forward. By the end of that um, exercise, you'll be left with very few stickies in different buckets. And then mm -hmm. after that, the team can vote on which one goes ahead and which one stays in the backlog. Okay, so yeah. it's more like um, majority wins kind of situation with the stickies. So there's more ideas that are similar that a lot of people thought about, then mm -hmm. that idea gets more pushed than the ones with like less stickies on the board, pretty much. Sometimes, but also sometimes the ones that get pushed are the ones that are in line with the business goals and also the user goals. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, because sometimes you'll get people who've come up with really brilliant ideas, but there's no one else, they, no one else is in that bucket. So if you're talking as a team, critically thinking, it'd be like, okay, I think we need to push this because they're in line with the type of um, our goals and the type of problem you, I mean, the type of solution you're looking to um, to have. Mm, I see. That's yeah. interesting to kind of see like how that sticky process works. Uh, what about those like ideas? Do they ever get like stored somewhere for later use or do the ones that don't make it to the end kind of just get thrown away and better luck next time sort of thing? <laughs> Um, some ideas are documented in a backlog where you have like features and this is usually the product manager who does this. So they have okay. a list of, of features that maybe won't make it in this version. Maybe they'll make it in the next version. Um, so we do make sure that we are documenting them because you'll never know when you will need them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's yeah. Sometimes though, like we, we don't have stickies, but we have like documents of like ideas that weren't really used, but it just get lost sometimes because we never look back at it, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah always make sure that they in the backlog so that you can always go back to it. For sure. Yeah. I think we've actually reached the end of our um, session. Uh, thank you so much for the talk, Miriam. Uh, the, these are very insightful. I think some of the questions that I asked it was more like a one-on-one -on -one for me, it's but okay. <laughs> it was yeah. really great because it helped me out a lot, but hopefully uh, you had a great time as well. Yeah, um, I did. I did. Yeah. So that's the end of our session. Thank you everyone for joining. And hopefully when you guys are watching this after the event, uh, you guys find it helpful as well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you as well. Bye.